Ion Fury is the most impressive build engine game, and while this is an unfair statement because it came out 20 years after all of the other build engine games, it's true regardless. From the opening level, you can tell how much effort was put into Ion Fury and the whole campaign was so fun to play. I really like this game and I feel like it's on the same tier as Shadow Warrior. Ion Fury is not as good as Blood or Duke Nukem to me, but I would prefer to play it than Shadow Warrior on any given day. With that said, Ion Fury borrows elements from all of the main build engine games. Of course, the Bombshell character originates from the Duke Nukem series, and the game's villain is voiced by John St. John. Excuse me, miss. Have you seen an enormous security droid anywhere? I seem to have misplaced it. After I'm done with it, you can claim what's left. Ion Fury's weapon roster reminds me of Shadow Warrior the most, and it has around the same level of polish as Blood. Most FPS fans know the history of Bombshell, so I won't really go into that, and also I haven't played the 2016 Bombshell game, which just looks dog shit. Ion Fury, however, is awesome and takes everything that the previous build games have done and built upon it, no pun intended. One of the most important aspects to get right in a 90s inspired first person shooter is the guns, and like I alluded to before, Ion Fury has a great selection of weapons to play with. The first two weapons you have at the beginning of the game include the Electrifier and the Loverboy, which act as the melee and pistol weapons respectively. There are points in the game where you need to use the Electrifier to power up generators, and I love how there's a real practical use for this weapon, rather than just whacking enemies with it when you run out of ammo. Nice. The Loverboy is another useful weapon, and it's a gun that you'll be using throughout the entire game, which is so cool to see from a pistol. Ion Fury has made the two most ignored weapons in FPS games crucial to beat the game with and to combat enemies. The Loverboy has an alternate fire mode that locks onto enemies, and it's one of the most addicting things in the world to do. I actually ignored it for like the first hour of playing, but by the end of the game, it'll be a huge part of the combat loop. The Disperser is the typical shotgun and it's pretty solid. It packs a punch and it's fun to shoot, but it doesn't blow me away or anything. If I had to rank it alongside the other build engine shotguns, it would definitely go higher than the Riot Gun from Shadow Warrior and maybe even the Shotgun from Blood, but it doesn't beat that iconic Duke 3D shotgun to me. There isn't any standard rocket launcher weapon in Iron Fury, but instead the alternate fire for the Disperser shoots grenades instead of regular shotgun shells. I like this little change, and it's kind of interesting to not have a rocket launcher in this game. Also, the game still features more explosive weapons in the form of the cluster puck or the bowling bombs, with the cluster pucks exploding as soon as they hit the ground, and the bowling bombs being more proximity based. The Penetrator is the SMG weapon of Ion Fury, and it has explosive fucking bullets, which is a great inclusion. You can light enemies on fire and then obliterate them further with the shotgun, for example. This is wonderful stuff. The chain gun is a heavy tank weapon that you grab off one of the game's bosses, and this is a gun that you use on the tougher enemies for sure. It 
It does take a while to wind up, which can be annoying in the middle of combat, but that's the give and take aspect of the chain gun, and I do enjoy that. The chain gun does so much damage, and you can stun lock the strongest and most elusive enemies, which is a blessing but it does have a slow wind-up speed, as I said. This adds to the meta of the game's combat, and that sentence also applies to the Ion Bow. Now, you can use the normal fire to one-shot low-level enemies with the Ion Bow, or you can charge up the weapon with the secondary fire mode and go apeshit on strong enemies. When this thing charges up to the max, you have no control over it, and it'll just spit out laser beams for a good few seconds. Again, there's a give and a take with this weapon, and I'm all for it. Ion Fury's weapon roster complements the enemy types very well, and you can tell that Ion Fury's arsenal was finely crafted. As for the enemies, there are two types of cultists that you'll find all around the campaign, with the yellow one being your standard fodder enemy, while the red one is armed with a fucking Ion Bow. I love how the Ion Bow can be accessed later on in the game, and you can get payback on the red cultist that shoot three scattered shots all the time at you. The Liberator is equipped with a Disperser, and they either attack you with the normal shotgun rounds or the grenade launcher alternate fire. It's great how these common enemy variations are using the same guns as the player and it's the closest we get to an even firefight. The drones that appear early on in the game are a distraction basically, and can be taken out with the lover boy very easily. There's a powered up version of the drone that shoots out homing missiles, and those are actually dangerous. They shake up the flow of the combat well, and I like their inclusion. The only enemies that I don't like are the mutants that appear in the later underground levels, as they don't do much besides fling some shit at you, and the spiders are also kinda worthless. Now to be fair, the spiders aren't inherently bad, and my real issue with them is that they just show up too much. If their appearances were reduced by half, they would be much more bearable, but they're literally in every single level in the game. That being said, the enemies, weapons, and combat loop are all fantastic in Ion Fury, and the mobility that you have also feels really nice. The controls are perfect across the board, and I have no complaints with them. Speaking of the gameplay, there are only two equipment items, and this is such a welcome decision by me. In Duke 3D and Shadow Warrior, some of the items that you pick up have no real practical use, and experimenting with them more often than not gets you killed. In this game, there are only the portable medkits and the radar, in which I didn't even use the latter at all. Though the portable medkits are fucking useful, along with the other little power-ups you get along the way. Let's talk about the campaign. I think that most of the levels are detailed, intricate, and well designed, but the variety, or lack thereof, in the later episodes is my main concern. Ion Fury is divided up into seven episodes, or zones as they call it, and there's three to five levels packed in each of them. The first episode is located in the heart of Neo DC, and the cyberpunk aesthetic is on full display. So many neon colours, so many little secret areas to explore, and a ton of enjoyment to be had. The player starts out in a nightclub when a massive explosion goes off. 
this gives you a clearer view of the cityscape, and as you can see, this game has an extremely vibrant colour palette, and the attention to detail is so impressive. Especially when you consider that this game is running on a 20 year old engine. There's a very Blade Runner inspired city to explore from here on out with little shop stools and graffiti painted on the walls. The first level directly ties into the others in the episode, and this unbroken level design structure reminds me of Half-Life or Quake 2. There are still individual levels to navigate, but there's no intermission screen like Doom until the end of the zone. I like this approach to level design, and it sets Ion Fury apart from the rest of the build engine catalogue. Speaking of the level design, there are so many fucking secrets packed into this thing that I'm never going to find them all. They only included one secret level in the game, which I'm personally fine with, but they definitely made up for the lack of secret maps with all of the secret areas. They give you a warning before you leave a level about the amount of secrets you're missing, which is great for those players that like collecting everything and don't want to miss stuff. In the next level, you find yourself jumping across rooftops, powering up generators, and making your way through this rather complicated layout. Oh my god, the quarterback is toast! These first set of levels are not exactly convoluted or anything, but they are a little daunting to navigate for newcomers. I mean, I've been playing classic first person shooters since I was like 10 years old, and I had some difficulty figuring out exactly where to go and what to do. However, this only really applies to the opening levels, and it's rather smooth sailing from there. The levels either become easier to go through later on, or you adapt to the game's level design. Regardless of which option it is, Ion Furies are still good and dense. Fan service is the first level to go underground, and fuck, this is my number one complaint with this game. There are way too many levels that are located in some type of sewer or underground tunnel, and the lack of variety detracts from the experience to me. Slotting these levels in once in a while, I'm talking like once every couple of episodes here, is fine. But when it's an entire zone's worth of underground levels, it gets tedious. They aren't bad or anything, but come on. These are like everyone's least favourite type of maps. Anyway, at least the next level steps things up a bit and we're back to the vibrant cityscape. Episode 1 is definitely the best out of the lots, and all of the texture work, sprite work and everything looks incredible. The episode doesn't close on a bus, but instead a horde of regular enemies, which I'm perfectly okay with. Generally speaking, bosses in FPS games aren't fantastic, so I'm glad that Ion Fury skimps out on them a bit. Episode 2 consists of exploring the rundown Global Defense Force base, and I love the look of this opening map. This this space is complete with a shooting range, sleeping quarters, a front desk area, and more. As you progress deeper into the episode, you'll find yourself in the main portion of the base. This entire episode and the one following it are extremely consistent, and the level design is solid across the board. Episode 3 is where you climb up to a tower owned by Haskell, the game's villain, and fuck, this is so good. The 
The latter half of this game can at times be a drag though, and that's unfortunate to say because the first part of Ion Fury is so excellent. They turn it up to 11 with the underground stages, and when they decide to throw in some more varied levels like Haskell's House of Horrors or the abandoned hospital, the game goes straight back to the sewers. Ion Fury actually cockteases us by letting you navigate this grassy mountain area, then you explore this amazing hospital level like I said before, and fuck, we're back to the sewer levels. You'll have to forgive us! This area may be less than kind to a pathetic base mortal human such as yourself. I don't really want to bitch about the level variety anymore because I think I made my point already, and Ion Fury in general is a fucking great game. The gunplay feels like the combination of every good build engine game. I like Shelly and her personality a lot. The hit scanning enemies are pulled off really well, like in Blood. The campaign feels like one long epic adventure which I enjoy, and there's plenty more to love about Ion Fury. This game is the future of build. And yes, I would say that it joins the best of the build engine as well. I'm excited about the upcoming DLC for the game, and it's going to be interesting to see what types of levels the designers will create for it. Until then, Ion Fury is such a solid title, and completing it has been my first proper experience with a retro-inspired first-person shooter. I guess Dusk is next, or a medieval? You tell me. What should I take a look at next time? Because if Ion Fury is anything to go by, the rest of these games are going to be fucking awesome.